What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how to use layers in Affinity Photo version two on the iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we're going to be talking about how layers work in Affinity Photo version two on the iPad. Version two on the iPad works very similar to version two on the desktop as well. So you'll also find it helpful for that if you're using it on desktop. Before we dive into Affinity Photo, I just want to remind you that this video comes from my full course intro to Affinity Photo version two on the iPad. You can find that over on Skillshare or Gumroad using the links in the description below if you want to learn more about this amazing program. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. Just make sure you stay tuned till the end for a special offer. Now that we have some images on our canvas, it's time to talk about our first core concept in Affinity Photo, and that is layers. This is really one of the most important concepts when it comes to making photo composites, and it is one of the things that separates professional programs like Affinity Photo from consumer programs like the Photos app on your phone. You open up the Layer Studio by tapping the first icon in the Studios bar on the right. Conveniently, it looks just like a bunch of sheets stacked on top of each other, which is essentially what layers are. When we open that studio, we can see that we have two images images stacked on top of each other here. Whichever image is on top in this stack will cover up the image on the bottom wherever they overlap. If they're the same size, you won't be able to see the bottom image at all. We can change the order of the stack just by tapping on one of them and dragging it. Then you can see that that van with the waterfall is now on top of the van with the beach. This can seem pretty simple, but once you start adding lots of layers, it can get more and more complex. Almost everything that gets added in Affinity Photo resides on a layer. So complex documents can end up with dozens or sometimes even hundreds of layers. For our thumbnail, project, we will end up with at least five or six different things in our layers panel. Layers essentially act like a stack of papers, but there are a few cool things we can do since they are digital. First, we can turn them on or off using the little dot on the side. If I turn off the top layer, I can see everything that is underneath it without the need to move it or delete it, which is really convenient. Let's turn it back on. There are a number of options along the top of this studio. Most of these we don't need for this class, but I want to point out a few of them that will likely be relevant. First up is the folders icon. This is used to group multiple layers together. You just select multiple layers by swiping over the top of them, and then you can press the folder icon to group them. This is really helpful for organizational purposes because it can keep things that should be together together and stop you from losing them. If you ever want to ungroup layers, just make sure that you have it selected and go ahead and tap the group icon again. Next up, we want to talk about the three dot or meatball menu here. Let's be just be selected on one photo and then let's hit that three dot menu. This is going to take us to an area with a lot of different details. But the important ones are the visible, lock, and solo options. Visible acts just like that little dot in the first part of the studio did, which means it will turn it on and off. The lock button makes it so you can't edit that layer. This is great if you want to make sure that a layer will never get moved or changed accidentally. Lastly, we have the solo button, which will turn off all the other layers and just let us see this layer on its own. Let me zoom out here a little bit so you can see this better. You can see when I solo this, that one disappears. You might want to see it from the other perspective as well. Let's go to the van on the beach and let's click solo. Then we just see that. This is great when you have a lot of layers and you want to be able to work on just one of them. Just come in and solo it and that will make it a lot simpler to work on just that layer. The only other thing that I want you to worry about in this panel is if you tap on the name of the layer at the top, you can go ahead and rename it. So I could call this one van beach and click OK. That's just going to make it easier for me to identify it in a long list of layers. OK, let's back out of here by tapping layer options and now we are back to the regular layers studio. Lastly, if you ever need to delete a layer, you just make sure you tap on the layer and then hit the delete button. Now I don't actually want to delete that so I'm going to use the two finger tap to undo it. And that is your introduction to layers. Again, it can seem simple right now, but make sure you have a good grasp of it because it's foundational to what comes after. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've learned a lot about how layers work in Affinity Photo. Now remember, this video is part of my full course, Intro to Affinity Photo version two on the iPad, which you can find on Skillshare or on Gumroad. So you can go ahead and check out the link in the description for those. Now, as a special offer, if you are using Gumroad for the single purchase option, you can go ahead and use the code YT15 in order to get the course for just $15. Okay, we'll chat in the comments and I will catch you in the next video.